二战结束后，来自世界各地的艺术家们纷纷涌入当时被誉为世界艺术之都的巴黎，形成了新巴黎画派。由此，一种全新的抒情抽象绘画风格应运而生。华人艺术家赵无极和朱德群来到巴黎，将中西美学融会贯通，与法国艺术家皮埃苏拉吉、乔治马修等艺术家共同开启了艺术历史的黄金篇章。时至今日，他们的作品仍然是高净值藏家竞相追求的热门，在全球拍卖市场中稳定发挥，屡攀高峰。本期视频带你走进享誉国际的 Opera Gallery， 位于纽约上东区的空间，探索现代艺术巨匠乔治·马修和朱德群的双人对话展，品鉴投资级艺术佳作。Hello, Laura. So good to see you again. You too, Karen. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy to be here and experience this beautifully curated exhibition. Before we start our walkthrough today, can you give us a brief introduction about yourself and the gallery? Of course. So my name is Laura Adams Miller. I'm the deputy director of Opera Gallery New York. We are 15 worldwide galleries, in fact. And currently on view at our New York location is an exhibition featuring two artists: Chinese artist Chu Tequn and French artist Georges Mathieu. And the exhibition is titled "Compositions in Rhythm." And the reason why we've chosen to put these two artists together is these are two artists, a French artist and a Chinese artist, who were inspired by each other's countries and cultures. And they were both pioneers of abstract expressionism, specifically lyrical abstraction.、Mm -hmm. Let's pick a few words and take a closer look. Okay, sounds great. Zhu Dechun was born in 1920. He studied at the National School of Arts, where he met Zhao Wuji and Wu Guanzhong. Not long after his arrival in Paris in the 1950s, he abandoned his early figurative styles and turned to more abstract compositions with broad brushworks and a bold sense of color, which evoke. The forms of Chinese calligraphy, the landscapes of his childhood, and the abstract experimentation taking place in New York and Western Europe. So you're absolutely right, and that's a very nice background on the artist. And having originally grown up learning traditional calligraphy, that did appear in his early works. And as the years went on, impressionism made a greater、um, appearance in his body of work because he was highly inspired by it, being that he was in Paris during these all these years. So this is a later work for the artist. It's from the year 2007,、mm -hmm. where his pieces have become much more vibrant and colorful in his later works. And as with the market for Chu Tequn, often his early works are considered his most valuable because they are the most rare. But it is not directly proportional. In other words, often a work of Chu Tequn, you're not only looking at the year for a quality piece; you're also looking at the composition, the scale, the colors. And this piece has an incredible use of brushworks and colors, and additionally, the use of darks and lights. And you can really see a clear sense of his inspirations from his early background, you know, studying. Eastern painting as well as Western painting as well. So this is a perfect mixture of the two. Zhu Dechun's work has become increasingly sought after for the last decade, and is among the most expensive of Chinese artists. His work has been shown in museums all over the world. And currently occupying more than 50 major museums. Like you said, his work is in more than 50 museums worldwide, and his current auction record is at 29 and a half million dollars. We're really seeing a resurgence in the demand for his artwork, especially as contemporaries such as Zhao Wuqi have achieved such prices. We're now seeing his market begin to catch up. So this is a really good moment to acquire a piece by the artist. George Mathieu is the founder of lyrical abstraction, and he is known as the Western calligrapher, who used signs as a new language for creativity in the desire to move away from the representation of images. What we are seeing right now is one of the finest examples of Mathieu's works. So you're exactly right that this is a very fine example of George Mathieu's work. It is here in this piece. This is eight wooden panels painted with oil paint. It's an early work from 1960, which is a very good year for、yes. George Mathieu. And it's just very clear here that his inspiration comes from Eastern calligraphy. But of course, he's taking it one step further and using abstraction to abstract the meaning,、mm -hmm. because calligraphy, as we know, is inextricably linked to meaning. It is, you know, the language.、Mm -hmm. But he takes it. All meaning away from it, and is purely using it as a form in this case. 
So Georges Mathieu was considered a great showman as well. He was very much inspired by action painting. He was a huge proponent of this. So the act of painting was just as much the artwork as the final result. He was well known for performing while making art. So whether he was doing it in front of a camera or in front of a live audience, sometimes with performers or Taekwondo, mm -hmm. um, you know, people adding to the spectacle of it all. He was also very well known for applying paint sometimes directly from the tube and just applying it quickly and using his emotion and his memories and his feelings to guide him. And so this piece was done also very quickly and we can see the energy in his brush strokes where we get the feeling that there was a sense of urgency as each stroke was made. Absolutely. According to Clement Greenberg, one of the most influential art critics of the post-war period, George Matu was the most powerful among his contemporary European painters. George Matu's work has been the subject of numerous retrospectives around the world, and it's in more than 80 museum collections, such as the Guggenheim in New York and the Tate in London. So Georges Mathieu, for many years, very much undervalued compared to his peers. Mm -hmm. In the post-war era coming out of America, in the 1960s, for example, there was a group of very important abstract expressionists. And for many years, the European expressionists, or lyrical abstraction artists, were many ways overlooked. And mm -hmm. so their market has not really caught up in that same respect. So now within the last five to ten years, mostly due to a resurgence in all of his museum retrospectives, for example, there has been an increased demand and finally his body of work is being recognized for his contributions to art history. There's a beautiful artistic dialogue going on here. Both works were made in the 1960s and share a visual resemblance. Can you recognize which work is by Zhu Duqun and which work is by George Matu? So I hope everyone watching has guessed correctly. This piece on the right is by Zhu Duqun mm -hmm. and this piece on the left is George Matu. But as you said so eloquently, they do share a very striking visual resemblance, namely in their color, their composition, and scale. And both pieces feature a very stunning example of playing with light and dark, and dark and shadow. For Chu Tichun, for example, we can see his influence of Taoist philosophy, the yin and yang, as well as the Western concept of chiaroscuro, notably used by El Greco and Rembrandt, who were two artists that he very much looked up to. And this piece is also a very striking example for Georges Mathieu because mm -hmm. it's featuring a composition focused mainly in the center of the canvas with a lot of negative space surrounding it, which has become one of his signature pieces of this era. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for giving us the tour and thanks for sharing your insight. It was my pleasure and thank you so much for coming and visiting our exhibition today. It was a joy to talk about these works and share the artwork of these two artists. 那我们今天的画廊私访就先到这里。如果你想要收藏视频中看到的作品，可以在视频下方找到我们的联系方式。如果你喜欢本期的视频，别忘了点赞、评论、收藏、转发。我们下期见啦！